So in an easy way to remember this is that in SP hybridization, there are there there is there are only two orbitals, uh, two hybridized orbitals. So two sigma bonds. You can see that there are two sigma bonds for each carbon atom. And then for um, for sp2 hybridization, there are three hybridized orbitals, three sp2 hybridized orbitals for sp2 hybridization and one empty. So this so so for sp2 sigma and these give two pi. For sp2, sp, these all three are sp2. For sp2, um, we have three sigma because three sp2 hybridized orbitals and one pi. And for sp3, because we have four, and we have four uh, sp3 hybridized orbitals, sp3, 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 sp3. So since we have four, and we don't have any p orbitals over here, so we have four sigma, zero pi. So in total, there will be always four bonds. Carbon will always form four bonds in total, either four sigma bonds and zero pi bonds, or three sigma bonds and one pi bond or two sigma bonds and two pi bonds. So all carbon carbon single bonds and carbon hydrogen single bonds will be sp3 hybridized. All carbon carbon double bonds will be sp2 hybridized. Carbon carbon double bonds along with the hydrogens and all carbon carbon triple bonds will be sp hybridized. Remember that, okay? So this is a linear shape. 180 degrees is the bond angle. Uh, sp2 is a trigonal planar shape, 120 degrees, and this is a tetrahedral shape, 109.5 degrees. So this is how we do hybridization. Now the next topic we are going to talk about is bond energy and bond length. Okay? So bond energy is the energy needed to break one mole of a bond in gaseous state. So remember the term gaseous state, very important. If you do not write that in the in the definition of bond energy, then uh, you you will lose marks. So bond energy is the energy needed to break one mole of a bond in gaseous state. As bond length increases, bond energy decreases. So what is bond length exactly? Bond length is the is the distance is it is the distance between the bonded pair of electrons and the nucleus of the atom, right? So the longer the distance, obviously the the lower the force of attraction between the nucleus and the and the bonded pair of electrons so the lower the bond energy because the greater the attraction the greater the bond energy the lower the attraction the lower the bond energy so as bond length increases bond energy decreases now the next topic we are going to talk about is coordinate bonding so coordinate so you know that covalent bonding is a sharing of electrons yet yeah, right but sometimes what happens is that both the electrons needed for a covalent bond are given by one atom. So usually what happens, I give one electron, you give one electron and we form a covalent bond. But sometimes I can give you both the, uh, I can share both my electrons with you when you have none and we can have a dative covalent bond which is called a coordinate bond. So uh, an example of this is the formation of the ammonium ion NH4+. plus. Now. NH4 plus. So if you see, this is NH3 ammonia, and there is a lone pair on the nitrogen atom. So what happens is that it gives this lone pair to an H plus ion, an H plus ion, and uh, it gives this electron to an H plus ion. Okay, and just a sec, we get. H plus ion and what we get is as a result we get an NH4 plus ion yeah because the ammonia was uncharged the H plus ion had a, had a plus one charge so when it went to the ammonia they formed an ammonium ion which is the NH4 plus ion so this is called coordinate bonding. Nitrogen gave both the electrons for the formation of this covalent bond between the nitrogen and the H plus ion. So actually, once this bonding happened, there you cannot distinguish the strength between this NH bond 
and this NH bond because the strength is the same. So remember that that's what I've written in the third point over here. But the way to represent this is not the right way to represent coordinate bonds. The correct